friends, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Karen Valentine and I'm an artist and colorist. And I sell my work at Etsy and I do real time coloring videos here on the channel. So um, welcome to everybody and welcome to uh, my first video for February. It's this um, awesome event put on by Monarch Coloring Events and I'm really, really excited to be a part of of the event this year. Um, I've done it as a colorist in the past, and this is the first year that I am participating as one of the artists, and I, I'm i just, it's kind of surreal and, re and really cool. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. So today we're gonna work on Nixie. She is the first of two Fae that I have available um, for the event. And um, all of the Images, uh, the the fae, fairies and fay images in my Etsy store are 40% off for the month of February. Um, we are working on Nina Desert Storm paper with Prismacolors. And um, I will have all of the colors that I use um, down in the description box um, below the video or beside the video, which it depends on the device that you're um, that you're watching from, but I hope that you um, enjoy it. Let's have some fun and um, let's get started. Okay, so this is Nixie and she is my forest fay, and this is what we're kind of um, going to try and um, and achieve <clears throat> again here on this page. And as I said, this is the Nina Desert Storm cardstock. Um, and I printed the light version of, um, of the coloring page. So, uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, I think I want to start this time with a little bit of white. And um, just because her, her face is so light... Um, because of the because I printed the very light version, I just will feel better if I kind of establish some of these highlights in here first. And um, if you if you follow my page or sorry my channel um, for any period of time, you know how much I love this paper. Um, I've tried lots and lots of different papers in my day <laughs> and um, nothing gives me the results that I get um, from this paper. So I think I made her lip a little bit, um, a little bit taller at the top than the original, but I think that that's okay. I wanted to give her just a little bit fuller lip. And then this line underneath here, this is kind of a um, a light reflection, I guess. So we'll just do a little bit right there. And um, let's see. Everywhere else is going to be um, easy to do later on. I just want some of these that I um, tend to occasionally go over um, accidentally. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I get kind of in here. Her chin you can't really see with this light version. Um, I do include a colored version um, JPEG to download um, in all of the um, anytime you purchase one of these so that um, it makes it easier for you to um, see what different things are supposed to be. Because sometimes, especially with the um, the really light grayscale, you lose some details. So um, just, you know, refer back to either the colored version or a darker version of the page if you ever feel like you're getting lost and you don't know um, where certain, uh, what certain things are or where they start and stop. That always, um, has helped me in the past. So, all right. And I think what I'm going to do today, instead of trying to fit all of her skin, 
um, in in this <clears throat> in this video because I I have a feeling that um, we're probably looking at at least two to two and a half hours to do um, her skin, her eyes, and all the things that I want to do um, here. I think I'm going to concentrate um, to start with on just her face. Um, so actually, let me uh, zoom in a little bit more since we're just going to concentrate on her face. And um, yeah, so all right, I think that that's enough, almost, I almost think that is enough white. This right here, this is a little reflect light, uh, reflective light there on the bottom of her chin. Oh yeah, here, let's do a little, a little bit here on her. It's kind of the same thing. Sometimes I'll take my pencil um, and um, I will draw in things that I, that I want to make sure that I can see later as I'm coloring. Because sometimes you, we get lost in what we're doing and all of a sudden we go, oh, crap, I shouldn't have, col I shouldn't have colored that um, or whatever. So doing it with the white for me, it's kind of the same thing as using a pencil. I'm just kind of putting in some of these um, things that are not very visible right now on this page. Um, also, because it's the tan paper, if this was the light gray scale on white paper, um, I think things would probably show up even a little bit better. All right, so I pulled all my pencils out. <laughs> I can't find the one that I need. How is that even possible? What the heck happened? There it is. Okay, I do that all the time like pencils that were right in front of me now have disappeared okay so I'm going to start with chestnut oh and just before I continue on just bear with me for a second I'm gonna re set that fo that focus okay so chestnut PC 1081 is what we're gonna start with um, if you are new to coloring grayscale um, <clears throat> one of the things that makes a huge, huge difference if you are um, doing portraits is using red um, toned colors on the um, grayest parts of the image. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to counteract that real heavy gray color and make the skin look so much more alive. If, if you just go straight in with um, the, your, your typical skin tones, your, your peachy tones, right over the top of grayscale, <clears throat> your skin um, is, is more likely going to look I don't want to. I don't want to say dead, but um, you know, when when in at Halloween time when we're drawing dead people, <laughs> we 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 like to use grays um, and make the skin look real gray. Well, that's what's going to happen on a grayscale image if you don't put some red tones down first. So, just my little tip. Everybody who um. <clears throat> who knows me, I'm going to turn this a little bit. Everybody who knows me and knows my channel kind of already knows that, but I'm, I'm hoping that there's some new people here um, today as well. So, so these, <clears throat> these darker tones typically go around the outer edges of the face. And the lighter tones typically are more in the center to kind of create that contoured um, look. I suppose you guys already know that. If it's if you're coloring, um, if you enjoy coloring fairies and fae, you're already kind of used to coloring people. All right, so let's do a little bit of this chestnut in here. Here. 
All right, we need some under her lip to create that, to push, to push this back. Cooper says hi. I'm just going to darken this nostril just a little bit here. I'm using a, a pretty light touch. Um, especially with these darker colors, I want to make sure that they're easy to blend out. So I always try and go very lightly to start with. I want to take just a second and put a little bit of white right here. I don't want to, I want to make sure I get that in here to stay lighter. Let's go up around the outer edge of the of her face. I guess that's okay for now. We can always come in and add more. 
Actually, now that I say that, I think I want to add a little bit more under her cheekbone here. bit more under her eye. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to um, Peach, which is PC 939. I'm going to use peach um, as opposed to light peach first on my tan paper. If I was doing this on white paper, um, I would be using the light peach first. I'm trying to get a piece of scrap paper to show you why. Um, I guess this is as good as anything else. Um, so <clears throat> on... Um, on white paper, the light peach is quite dark. <clears throat> I don't know how well you can see that. I can see it really well. On tan paper, the light peach is very light and bright. <laughs> you, you, it doesn't look like it on the video very well, but it, it really is. It really um, shows up so much more. Um, and the peach on white paper is just really, really, really dark. But on the tan paper, um, it's just right. So when I'm doing on tan paper, I do my peach colors first and then light peach. And when I'm doing it on white paper, I do my light peach colors first. And then if I need to, I do the peach Another reason I love this tan paper is that light colors show up on top of dark colors. So I don't have to work light to dark. I can work both, <clears throat> both directions, um, light to dark and then dark to light and back and forth um, as I need to. So I'm just kind of... Um, going over the chestnut a little bit and then coming out into, coming further into the face with this peach. This is kind of gonna be like the transition color. Just blending 
out this darker area a little bit. It feels it feels weird not continuing <laughs> continuing down into the rest of the to her neck and the rest of her body. I know we'll run out of time, and I don't want this video to run too long. All right, I'm going to grab my um, chestnut and just darken this a little bit. Be really. Um, careful gentle because these dark colors they show up so well so you you really just just want to kind of dot the color on just as lightly as you can go so that you don't have a real harsh line okay now i'm going to switch to the um peach uh, sorry light peach which is pc927 i hope I hope that's right. Now my pressure can go a little bit a little bit heavier because I already have some color kind of laid down here on the paper. So I don't have to worry as much about uh, pencil marks. Okay, I want to um, leave this center of her forehead without color. The light peach, if you get it on there, it's not going to be that big of a deal. If you're working on the tan paper, it's going to um, cover. If we add white on top, it's going to cover. Um, but if you're working on white paper, you really want to try and leave um, the areas that are meant to be white. You want to really leave those alone. So um, I do tend to work back and forth a lot. This is chestnut. And the reason that I do that is because I'm always finding things that need fixing. Um, things that I, you know, didn't, didn't do the first time around uh, with a certain color. And if I, if I don't fix them right when I see them, um, I tend to sometimes miss them and I don't want to do that. So I just noticed that this ear really needed a little bit more um, of that chestnut. So
gonna soften this um, highlight on her chin just a little bit. Let's um, let's go ahead and put some white down on her cheek, on her um, the the high part of her cheekbone here. Um, if you are working on white paper, you you don't need to do this. You just want to make sure that you leave that um, paper white. Although, yeah, I would just leave the paper white because you can come in if, when we do some blending with white and add it later, or you can add it now. I just really love to be able to use white as a color. Um, and I can do that with with mid toned papers. I'm not pushing very hard. I'd rather build up the color um, gradually so I don't get um, pencil marks, which I kind of did on this side of the cheek because I was getting a little bit um, hurrying myself, which I sometimes tend to do when I'm filming. If you press too hard, then you get those pencil strokes. And when the time comes to start to... Um, you know, blend your colors, get everything all smooth and stuff. It makes it a lot harder to blend if you've pressed too hard. Just adding a little bit more in areas that I really want to make sure I keep white. Do some of that underneath the um, eyebrow. And I want a little bit that might 
been too much. It's okay, we can blend it out, it'll be fine. Okay, so, um, see how she looks very pink right now? So we're going to counter that. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if I want to add beige or eggshell. Both colors work um, really nicely, and it just kind of depends on um, how you feel. <laughs> it depends on how I feel. Like, there's, I wish I could tell you, like, oh, if it, you know, like, there's a definite reason for me choosing one color or the other. Sorry, I have to throw some of this chestnut down here real quick. Um, it's just purely like just me going, hmm, which one will I use? And then generally I'm going to start um, light and in, a, in, in one area and just feel it out a little bit. Just... Um, <clears throat> I never, well, I, should, I probably never is, you know, kind of a dumb word to use, but um, I generally try to um, do a little area and feel it out and see if this is the color that I want to go with. So we're going to start with the eggshell. I'm going to do a little area like right here and see how I feel about that. And I feel okay about that. So we're gonna continue on with the eggshell. Um, the beige is just not quite as yellow. And so it just kind of depends on what, on what look you're after. So I'm gonna work this in just a little bit into the forehead Still kind of trying to leave that as, you know, mostly white. Or at least much lighter than everywhere else. Oh, by the way, if you see me I'm brushing color off with my hand, don't freak out. <laughs> um, I That's what I do. <laughs> um, and I've, I've talked to um, my subbies about this before because for some reason here in the dry desert, I don't have a problem with smudging. So I've never gotten into the habit of using a brush to brush away any crumbs or anything that comes about. Um, so do what works for you. If you get smudges, then then by all means, please use a brush and don't use your hand. All right, I'm going to bring some of this on top of the white. But just a little bit, I still want to keep as much of that um, top, uh, high cheekbone there. I want to keep that pretty white. And when I put this yellow on, I don't really want to come down too far into here because it's just really not necessary. Okay, I think we're gonna do some more. Let's pull out. So I have um, black grape and I have grayed lavender, and I like to use um, both of those. Generally, the um, the darker colors in the darkest 
shadows. Now with this color, um, because it's so dark, again, you want to be really, um, start with a really, really light touch because it marks very, very easily. And um, yeah, it marks very, very easily. So you can always add more, but taking it off can be um, a little bit more challenging, so. going to use extremely light touch, lots of little teeny tiny circles. We don't want um, uh, pencil strokes. I think I might switch to the grade lavender, which is I think PC ten twenty six. This one because it's um, lighter, you don't have to uh, be quite as super cautious about pressing too hard. I think we'll. A little bit of that over here. All right, let's add some. Um, pink, nine, PC928. We'll go ahead and add some of that to her cheek. Something here is bothering me, and I'm not sure what it is. Um, it's probably just that this isn't dark yet, I'm thinking. I guess I'll just leave it. We'll just leave it. Probably once I get the braids done there, it'll look better to me. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of pink on her nose. And... Um... What do I want now? I think I want this to be a little bit darker still. So I'm gonna come back in with my chestnut. I want 
it's something here is not looking right to me. So we're going to just just going to kind of define the edge of her face here a little bit separated from the ear. Same thing over here. back in with some white as soon as I find it. <laughs> All right, let's try, um, let's go ahead and do some blending with the white. We don't want to go too far into the darkest areas um, because we don't really want to lighten those. So if you work into those lighter areas, just do it with a with a gentle pressure and kind of feather it in. I might not have enough pigment down yet. I'm kind of debating on um, throwing some more peach and eggshell. So I'm changing my mind. We're not going to do white yet. We're going to come back to the light peach, actually. Because um, I just didn't feel like there was enough pigment yet on the page for me to start blending with the white. Actually, I might keep peach for the um, the dark areas. So we're going to use peach and light peach both, and we're going to add both of those on here. Peach in the darker areas. That's going to kind of we're going to use that kind of to start blending those colors all together a little bit. And then light <clears throat> the light peach in the, the center of the face. And maybe more eggshell after that. It's just kind of a layering process, and I do um, I do kind of tend to go back and forth and back and forth till I kind of build up enough pigment and color to where um, I'm happy. All right, let's do white. And then um, I think I'm gonna add some like burnt ochre or something. So let's just get our highlights established a little bit more now. We're just gonna add some more white. 
as you work your way away from the brightest area, you're just going to start lessening your pressure so that you're feathering that white away from the cheekbone. Feel like that nose needs a little bit more work. Let's um, take some of that black grape and just darken under the nose there. And I'm going to take the chestnut and I'm going to Bring the shadow of the nostril out just a little bit. The shadow of the nose under the nostril. No, I'm not. This is still not dark enough, so a little bit more chestnut. Or maybe some grayed lavender. Let's go ahead and use some of this gray lavender underneath the eye. Okay. Take a little bit of uh, burnt ochre is PC943. I'm putting very light pressure on here. Her, um, this is not dark enough yet, this under the cheekbone area right here. <clears throat> so, okay, this, this is where, um, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, I need to do this. Okay, so I know I said I was using Prismacolors for this page, and mostly that's what I'm using. But there are times when I have to pull out a couple of luminance colors. Um, if you don't have these, um, boy, I almost want to pull out my chart here. Um, if you don't have, beige sienna is a decent replacement for the um, dark flesh I find 30 and 40% really close. That's luminance 745 and 741. I really find them very close. Um, and then there is 
well, the pencil says it's dark flesh. I think it's been changed to warm earth, although these are brand new pencils and it still says dark flesh on there. So this is number 748. Um, I've talked about this on my channel before. If you really like doing portraits, um, but you don't, I, I actually, in truth, would not recommend a full set of luminance. Um, I have them, and um, of all of the um, artist quality um, sets that I own, I probably like the luminance the least. Don't hate me. <laughs> don't don't send me nasty letters. Um, I just finished swatching all of my pencils. And um, I, uh, a after swatching them all, I liked the luminance the least out of all of those pencils. However, there are some, I need to add some more color in here. There are some, um, there are some colors in the port, there are portrait colors, the dark flesh colors, which are also warm earth colors. I don't know why um, people change names of stuff. Um, but anyway, um, there are some colors that are um, a must have for me personally for portraits. Um, and that's the dark flesh colors. Um, I really, really like the anthroquinone <laughs> um, pink. I really like that color. Um, uh, the buff titanium is a wonderful color, but these these um, dark flesh tones always um, work well. They always I'm always so happy after I've added it. If I'm ever struggling, and I'm like I can't get this the tone the color that I want or the you know I just it's something's not right as soon as I pull these out and start adding it it starts to come together for me the way I want it to so as you can see this um this this luminance 748 dark flesh or warm earth um really just really made that much richer and much um much nicer i'm really glad that we that i added this um i can also add some of the dark flesh 40 percent, which is 745 um okay so back to if you don't have these colors you could use um you could use prismacolor uh, <laughs> my brain just stop working. Um, espresso, Prismacolor Espresso instead of the, the dark flesh. Just be cautious. Um, add that color slowly. Make sure you like it before you go whole hog. Um, and you could use the beige sienna um, Prismacolor instead of, instead of this 40%. Um, But I am so much happier now with this. I'm going to add some of this to the top of her head as well. It's like when I when I use them with the Prismacolors, um, they don't feel scratchy anymore. It's like they blend the Prismacolors acts as a buffer, and then all of a sudden these um, the dryness doesn't seem as bad. And I know this is that's the way that they're supposed to be. And I'm sure on different papers, um, they probably act differently as well. I'm going to put some of this here. Because um, I do really believe that um, different pencils work better on different papers. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of the dark flesh in here. Um, again, try espresso if that's, if you need to. Okay, so I'm at a point, I am going to pull out my, um, my luminance 
full blender pencil, if I can find it. Not luminance, my Karen Dash full blender pencil. Um, because I do love it. It is a great, great pencil. Make sure that um, if you've used it somewhere else, you've given it a good cleaning, <laughs> that you've rubbed it, rubbed the color off somewhere. But um, I don't know if you can see how well this is blending this out, but um, it's just really, I just love this pen, these uh, blender pencils. And um, you don't have to press, press really hard. If you have enough pigment down on your paper, um, pressing hard is not required to get your colors to blend and smooth out. If you if you have to press really hard, then you're um, uh, flattening the tooth of the paper. And if you wanted to go back and add some more color later, it could be um, more challenging. So this is just kind of medium pressure, but because I have enough pigment down on the paper, they're all blending. The colors are blending real nice without too much pressure. Okay. So I've gotten to the point now where I feel like I really need to do the eyes and the lips um, because I like the skin tone, but then there's always that um, it, something just doesn't feel quite right yet kind of a feeling. Um, this is the Dark Flesh 745. Um, something doesn't feel quite right, and a lot of that time, a lot of that um, for me is because the eyes and lips aren't done, and I can't fully gauge if I'm happy with the skin tone yet. So I'm going to do that as soon as I <laughs> do a little bit more blending. I always feel like I'm, um, I rush myself in these videos um, because I would, um, when I was off camera, I would probably work on um, the skin tone for quite a bit longer than I, than I really feel like I have when I do these videos. Okay, let's do lips. Lips? Sure, let's do lips. All right, so I'm going to take my white. I'm going to put a little um, highlight kind of right at the, a little bit lower on the lip than I might normally do. So let's just do a few. make sure that I can see this. Okay, so I always start my um, lips with nectar. I don't know why. Um, I think because it just kind of like is a good base color I found for um, any other color that I want to add to it. We'll get those teeth. So just start with a layer of um, nectar. And right now I'm going to grab a, I think French gray. This is French gray 20%. Let's see. I don't remember what I... Um, all right, let's just, I'm going to put a little bit of French gray and we don't want the teeth to be white, white. We want the teeth to be kind of off white and the outer teeth are always a little bit darker than the teeth right up front. Um, 
<laughs> I put down that French gray and now I can't find it. So we'll use 30% French gray. I just want to do that on the outer teeth. And, I don't know, there's something, I'm just gonna, this is espresso. I just want the tiniest little bit of a line there in between the teeth. All right, that's good enough. Let's, um sure if I want henna or mahogany red. Let's try mahogany red since we're going to be doing the, um, the uh, what are those called? <laughs> Ladybugs in red. Um, I think it's okay to, ha uh, to have her lips be a little bit pinky or red or colored. So I'm going to start in the darkest areas, which is the corners of the mouth. Because that way, if I don't like the color, I still have time to adjust the color um, by switching to something else and then just covering this up. But I, li I like it. So I'm just going to feather it into the Uh, upper lip. I definitely did make her lip a little bit bigger, and I'm debating on whether I like that or not. Um, if I take my peach, or my light peach, Just kind of go over the top of that lip just a tiny little bit. I feel like I almost made it just a little bit too tall. Not that it really makes a huge difference. It's I guess that's okay. It really didn't make much difference. Okay, so now... Um, Let's do some more of this here. And right above that white that we put down, we're going to make this a little bit darker. Make this. It's really um, amazing to me how you can change the whole look of a face by changing, by not getting the lip right or getting the eyes right. Um, she needs a, sm a much better smile. Um, I need to bring, I need to make some changes here. So I'm going to get out my... Henna or chestnut? Let's see, what do I want to do here? We need... This is just going to be me trying to fix my own mistakes here. <laughs> um, oh, I might need black. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of the shadow right here a little bit of the shadow here 
That's better. At least she feels like she's kind of smiling a little bit more now. She was, um, I did not like the shape of her lips before. This is getting a little bit better. But it really is crazy how, how tiniest little um, deviations can really change the look of a face. Okay, I think I'm going to add some more white. So her, her lips definitely look different than the um, than my original. Oh well. All right, a bit of white. We're going to blend out with the white. Not happy. How do I fix this? Um, okay, it's looking too um, pink. So I'm going to take this burnt ochre. And I'm going to glaze some color over. This would be one of those cases where I, I could probably work on trying to fix these lips for much too long. Not happy. Um, okay, let's go to... I think I'm going to switch to henna. Now I'm going to turn this just a little bit. All right. So. Got. Sorry, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of trying to um, absorb what I want to change. It's not. It's not that they're bad. Um, the lips are fine, I guess. I'm sure you guys understand. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of chestnut. No, not chestnut. I'm going to do a little bit of that um, luminance dark flesh. Um, again, you can use beige sienna. I'm almost thinking that that's not even enough. Uh, dark enough. I'm almost wondering if I should use a little bit of the other. So I'm just going to darken this shadow under her lip with the luminance dark flesh. I think um, last time I looked at Dick Blick, they're now calling it dark flesh 70%. Go figure. Or warm earth 70%. So I don't know. Maybe they have plans of making one that's even darker. I don't know. All right, let's um let's do her eyes. I'm not this is 
obviously white. That's a little bit better. All right, let's do her eyes. Um, okay, so I want some cool grays. I think I'm going to start with some henna. Not henna, sorry. Nectar. Um, 1092. Let's get this nectar in here. All right, then we're going to do, um, I think this is 20% cool gray. So PC 1060. Actually, I probably could still put, go ahead and put the nectar on the water line there. Okay, then we want cool gray 50%. This is 1063. just on the outer corners and under the lash line. All right, for the eye color, I think I'm gonna start with um, light umber. Let's start there. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> Espresso. I have no idea what number that is. 940, I think. Oh, that's not right. Um, I'll write it down in the description box down below. I'll be sure I write down the numbers. That's going to go on the out on the outer edge of the iris and at the very top. And then um, we'll just darken. It's already pretty dark, but we'll just darken that pupil a little bit more. Okay. Um, the lashes are showing up pretty well, but we'll just darken those a little bit more. When I do the lash line underneath the eyes, I make a little, little teeny tiny circle um, for the You know, the edge, the like it would be makeup, I guess, um, where the lashes meet so that you get a really soft darkening rather than a harsh line. Okay. Um, I want to do those eyebrows right now because they're bugging me that they're um, not not done. So we're going to use light umber. 
on the eyebrows. I'm not going too long here. Um, okay, so what I did for the glitter, or for her, yeah, for the glitter, um, I used a white Posca pen. This is the 0.7 millimeter. Um, I want to make sure that I'm ready for this, though. I'm I'm feeling um, like I'm rushing myself. There's just still something that I'm not quite happy with. I think I want some more eggshell. Maybe that's the problem. We need a little bit more color happening in her face. So a little more eggshell. is already making me happier. Yep. Um, I will probably add some more shading right in here with the um, uh, <laughs> the luminance color, the dark flesh. I will probably darken that a little bit more. But just adding that yellow really made me feel happier. Um, that's so weird how just little things make a difference. Okay, so let me show you. Um, with the Posca pen, I went through and I just did lots of teeny tiny little glitter dots. Um, I did some in the eye, some on the eyelashes. I'm going to let that dry. There's some things I'm still not happy about. And I'm, I'm going to take my, um, my mm, no, nope, I'm going to take my henna. Because, yeah, there's all these things that I'm, that I'm forgetting to do here. Um, and I'm going to darken around the, in this far corner here. We're going to make this a little bit um, darker. We're going to take our, hen our uh, nectar and just lightly feather that into the eye. I still feel like she needs a little bit um, more lines under her eye here. So this is chestnut. That's better. That's much better. Um, and also I think that, you know, the, the outer paper has a lot to do with how things look. Once we get the hair on, it's going to change a lot of things, um, 
a, lo a lot of how the face looks. I'm just going to add a little bit of nectar. I'm doing all this while I'm making sure that that Posca pen is nice and dry, because then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. I really like nectar. Her, um, her face looks a little... I made it a little bit fat, it looks like. So when I come in with the hair color, um, I need to, that looks better already. Kind of gave, gave her face a little bit more of the shape that it needed to be. So that's gonna be better. All right, so now what I'm, you could leave it just like that if you wanted to. Let the, let the, um, let the glitter, you know, be, be white. Uh, but I'm going to take my, one of my favorite coloring supplies, and that is my Gelatos. Um, this is the um, Iridescent Rose Quartz Gelato. And I'm just going to get some of it on my finger. And I'm going to rub it. I, I am if it's going to work for me. It feels a little bit um, dry for some reason today. So I just I just put some on a piece of paper. And I'm, <laughs> this is not going the way it's supposed to. All right. So put some on my finger and rub it on top of the, there we go, rub it on top of the um, Posca pen. And what that does is it takes that white, kind of turns it pink, and I don't know how well you can see, but now um, she's got this iridescent pink color on top of her eyes which is just what I wanted for, for um, a fairy. And I might even come in and do some on top of her ears or something, I don't know. But um, I think, I think we can pretty much call this one, I, I think she's probably 95% done. Her face is 95% is done. Um, I'm just darkening the um, crease above her eye, just a tiny little bit with espresso. Um, her uh, nostrils maybe need a tiny little bit of darkening. And maybe just a little bit more highlight. Okay, not too bad. I'm not super crazy about how I did her her lips, um, but they're not terrible, so I can live with it. Just darkening that crease a little bit with espresso. And actually, sometimes you can use a little bit of, believe it or not, sometimes you can use a little bit of black just in the very corners. She, obviously, you don't want her to have black lips. Um, and I would probably just blend that out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna call um, I'm gonna call this done. So um, I hope you guys all had a wonderful time. Um, chatting with each other and all that fun stuff. So um, I will carry on with this over the next week, um, week, week and a half maybe, um, where I just continue on. Next time I'll finish her off her her uh, lower the lower part of her body. You know we'll do her, we'll we'll get it all done piece by piece. Um, so until I see you guys on the next one, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. 
happy coloring, happy February, and thanks again to Monarch Coloring Events for asking me to participate. I was very grateful. So, um, see you guys later. Bye.